is Tetsuya Ozajima, uh, and he also has a talk on the A64FX. We thought we'll start strong with a lot of A64FX in the morning, you know, just to wake everybody up. It's a very interesting talk, so. Uh, Tetsuya, would you like to introduce yourself and take it from here? Okay, so thank you, introduction. The, my name is Tetsuya Ozajima, the Riken RCCS. The, today, I will talk about the preliminary performance evaluation of the Fujitsu A64 effects using HPC applications. So, the, first of all, the, I will introduce the background and the purpose of our study. The super, uh, sorry. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. So, supercomputer Fugaku had, had installed at the Riken RCCS as a successor system of the super, supercomputer K. So in this system, the processor is the A64FX, which was developed through the uh, co-design between the Fujitsu and Riken. The other AC20, the performance of the HPL achieved the 450.53 petaflops with uh, uh, 396 racks, and uh, that of the HPC achieved uh, 13 petaflops with uh, 316 racks. Uh, now we have the chance to evaluate some applications and the benchmarks on the Fugaku system. So the, in this study, the, we evaluate the preliminary performance of various HPC applications and the benchmarks. The, we have just applied the compiler optimization the, for this evaluation. So we did not uh, tune the, some uh, code for the, some, uh, pr uh, some processors. And we want to uh, share the performance characteristics and the usability of the Fugaku system. The explanation of the A64FX was given by the uh, previous presenter. So the, I explained the simply here. The A64FX has the four NUMA node here. Uh, this is a called, called uh, core memory group, uh, CMG for short. The clock frequency is the 2.0 gigahertz in uh, normal mode, and uh, it achieved, achieved uh, 2.2 gigahertz in uh, boost mode. But the, in this presentation, the, we use the only 2.0 gigahertz normal mode. The performance of the semi triad and is the 830 giga, gigabyte per second, and the, the efficiency of efficiency is more than the 18 percent. Also, the performance of the gem is the 2.7 teraflops, teraflops, and the efficiency is more than 90 percent. So the the details of detail of A64FX is uh, described here. This is GitHub. Uh, and so please refer to the, this uh, document. It, it is an interesting document. So the, in this uh, presentation, the, we employed three processors for performance evaluation and compared performance of A60, A64FX with uh, Sunda X2 and the Skylake processor. The specification of the A64FX is, is explained in the previous slide. And uh, our system of Sand X2 has uh, 28 cores per socket, and the total number of cores is uh, 506, uh, uh, 50, uh, sorry, uh, 56 cores per node. The SIMD length is the 128 bit. I, it is a, a quarter of the A64FX and the Skylake. The peak memory bandwidth is uh, 341 uh, giga, gigabyte per second. Uh, this is a larger than a little larger than the Skylake because the uh, uh, memory channel is, is the a little big bigger than the uh, Sand X. Uh, sorry, Skylake. And the Skylake has the oh, uh, 12, 12 core per socket, and the total number of core is the uh, 24. Per node. The clock frequency is the 2.6 gigahertz, and uh, it is the biggest number of, among these uh, processors. The, in this evaluation, that we applied just compiler optimization. So the 
the compiler optimization is uh, uh, here. And next. The, we employed the, these three ap applications and the benchmarks for performance evaluation. The, there is a, uh, the larger performance suite, uh, Voodoo, Mini FMM, Lulesh, the Mega Sweep, uh, Crowbarif, and the TRIF. And uh, in this presentation, I selected the Voodoo for the computational compute intensive application and the TRIF for the memory bandwidth in the, uh, memory bandwidth intensive application. So I wanted to explain the all application and the benchmarks, but uh, I pick up these two application uh, due to the uh, short presentation time. For other application, uh, please defer to the, uh, my pro our proceedings. So the, in, the, in this performance evaluation, the, we compare the performance of A64FX and SandX uh, and Skylake. The For OpenMP application, the, we employed the one node per, uh, one node, uh, sorry, one node and change to the number of thread from one uh, to all cores. The, for OpenMP plus MP are hybrid applications. That we employ the one node with A64FX and uh, up to two nodes with the SandX2 and Skyrack. And all of the variation that we tried to do a strong scaling. And uh, here is a disclaimer. The, I will read uh, this sentence. The, the software used of the evaluation, such as uh, compiler, is still under development and it's performance may be uh, different when the supercomputer Fugak start its operation. So, <clears throat> okay. The first of all, the, I explained the overview of the TLIF application. The TLIF is a mini application for solving the liner heat conduction equation on the, uh, especially the uh, decomposed uh, grid using the five point stencil implicit solver. In implicit solver, the, it requires a lot of memory access to the array and the memory pressure is extremely high. Uh, so the, it can say the memory bandwidth intensive application. The, we selected the, this uh, benchmarks TBM5 uh, template for, as the program size. It is uh, provided in this application. The only we change the number of iteration from five to three. Okay, so left hand side uh, shows the execution time, and the right hand side shows the relative performance normalized by the A64 FX one thread performance. The horizontal axis shows the number of process and the number of threads per process. So the, as, as you can see, the execution time of A64FX, which is a disprover, uh, is uh, uh, fastest, fastest in the all uh, thread and process combination and the following by the uh, Skylake, uh, the gray bar and the Sandex, or that is the orange bar. So the, look at the, this right-hand side, uh, relative performance. So as you can see, the performance of A64FX was uh, saturated at the about eight or eight thread, uh, eight or four thread. Um, the similarly, the Skylake and the SandX appear to be the uh, saturated with the memory bandwidth at uh, 12, 12 threads. So I think that the opera, uh, optimization of the Fujitsu compiler allowed us uh, to use enough memory uh, bandwidth even with a small number of threads. So this is because the optimization of, of uh, loop unloading and the software pipeline uh, improves the uh, instruction pass cycle of the uh, computational computation loop. So the, Please see the uh, this 
uh, four process and uh, 12 thread combination. The, the performance of A64FX is uh, twice higher than uh, that of the Skylake. Uh, this ratio is uh, uh, proportional to the ratio of the peak memory bandwidth. So this is a reasonable part. Reasonable. Oh, sorry. Oh, this, this is a reason. Okay. So next to the, uh, the I explained the overview the, of the Voodoo. Uh, Voodoo means the Bristol University docking engine. Uh, this is a mini application for the general purpose molecular docking programs. Uh, it calculates the uh, uh, potential, e potential e energy using the matrix information. So the, it is a, a compute-intensive compute application. And uh, we set the uh, number of the molecules is uh, 32 kilo as the problem size. And the iteration is uh, eight, which is the uh, uh, default number of uh, this application. So this figure shows the gigaflops performance of Voodoo. The vertical axis shows the uh, gigaflops and the horizontal axis shows the uh, number of threads. Uh, as you can see, the Sand X2, which is uh, this graver, uh, is the lowest performance. Uh, due to, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, so, or, Sand X2 is the orange bar. Orange bar is the uh, uh, lowest performance due to its uh, 112 and 28 bit uh, symmetry length because the computational power uh, per core is a quarter than uh, as a processors. The, on the other hand, the Skylake, the, which is the graver, uh, achieved the highest performance until 24 uh, thread. The, however, the performance of S64FX uh, is a, a significant, significant, uh, slightly the higher than the sun, uh, Skylake on the power node. Uh, it seems it, it seems to be too small the performance difference com uh, compared to the peak, peak computational performance ratio. The, based on the ratio, the performance of A64 effects uh, can be explained to the about 30, uh, sorry, 75% of that of Skyrim. But however, the percentage is only ju just uh, 60%. So we think that this is uh, due to the inf insufficient of the out of all the resources. So in next in next section uh, we described the uh, cause of the performance degradation and the improvement. So the from the this evaluation the A sixty four FX processor. Uh, outperform out the other uh, processors in memory bandwidth intensive application uh, be, because uh, it's HBM2 and wide CBD. On the other hand, the actual performance of the A64FX was not high compared to its peak performance in computer intensive application such as Voodoo. So in this case, uh, we think that this is because uh, pipeline stall due to the lack of out of the resources. So, when the pipeline install occurred, the new instruction cannot be executed in the uh, pipeline. So the, as a result, the performance of the entire application is degraded. Uh -huh. So this slide shows the amount of the hardware resources. The generally the chip area per core is smaller than Intel Xeon processor uh, in many core processors, such as A64FX. So the number of, in this case, the number of uh, buffers and the register required, required for the out of order execution is too small. So the when instructions are uh, chained in the loop, uh, such as the uh, N-body program, kernel, the frequency of the arithmetic units store includes, increased due to the insufficient, uh, insufficient resources. So as a result, the overall comp uh, computational performance will be degraded. So look at the, this table. The, this table shows the uh, hardware resources. 
uh, number, uh, number of the entry of hardware resources. As you can see, the A64FX uh, ha hardware resources is too small than uh, that of the Skylab. So it, this is because uh, uh, chip area per core is uh, small, uh, smaller than Intel Zeon. So the in Voodoo application, the performance degraded uh, has occurred. So the for uh, to solve the performance degradation, the loop split is important. We think the one of the reasons for performance degradation is arithmetic unit due to lack of hardware resources. That is, too many variables are used in the one loop. So in other words, uh, if we can reduce the number of variables used in a loop, that there is a possibility to solve the uh, resource shortage. Uh, in such a small loop, the pipeline occurred efficiently and uh, improving the performance of arithmetic units. So it means the whole application performance is also improved. So in Fujitsu compiler, it provides the loop fission function the which makes it make it easy to uh, implement loop fission, uh, loop, loop split. Uh, to use the loop fission, so in, inside the pragma statement just before, uh, you want to uh, split. And then the compiler can split the loop, split the loop into the variable loops automatically. Uh, also, the data consistency between the divided loop is automatically generated by the uh, Fujitsu compiler. Uh, finally, the, we evaluate the performance uh, of the loop fission function. The, we applied the uh, loop fission function of the Fujitsu compiler to Voodoo application. The, as, a result, as a result, the, the there is a three loops in a, a three loops in a voodoo kernel, and uh, these kernels are split were split into the two, two and the three loops respectively. The, after applying the loop fission to the voodoo, the the performance was thirty eight percent better than the before. So we think that the effect of the loop fission loop splitting is uh, important improve the utilization, uh, utilization ratio of the arithmetic unit and uh, reduce pipeline stores. But however, the loop split, uh, loop fission does not always uh, improve the performance. In fact, uh, we applied to only the loop fission to the mini FMM. The, the performance was same as before, uh, before the loop division. Now finally, the, I conclude the, my talk. Uh, we have read the some HPC application and the benchmarks uh, compared with the A64FX against the SunTex2 and the Skylake. The in-memory bandwidth, uh, in -memory bandwidth intensive application, it achieved the high performance uh, due to the HBM2 or uh, large SIMD length. On the other hand, uh, in computer compute intensive application, the performance was very very high due to the uh, sorry performance was not very high due to the long instruction latency and the uh, uh, relatively small amount of hardware resources. However, the in a loop fission function by Fujitsu compiler improved the performance. In boot application, the thirty eight percent thirty eight percent speed up. However, the loop fission uh, does not always improve the performance. So this is important to the combi combine some other uh, optimization and uh, loop fission. So, so our center, uh, we want to share the uh, optimization for the A64FX FX or, or uh, FUGAC systems. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um... This is a very interesting talk. So we've got actually one question already from, from John. Uh, for those who are wondering why our panelists' questions not turning up, well, because we can't actually write questions in the Q&A. 
so we put them in chat. So a uh, question from John first. Uh, can you please remind us, uh, was this, uh, Skyli is the Skyli TDP approximately the same as that of the A64FX used uh, in the FX1000? Uh, can you give some insight on that? No, what? sorry. Can you hear me? Okay, okay. Can you, I, I can hear. Yeah, no, so we first asked John's question about the Skyli TDP. But yes, we can afterwards take the q as well. Uh -huh. Please compare a sky. Hmm? Uh, what might be going between the six and the compare the sky? Uh -huh. um, <laughs> vectorization. Okay. Oh, sorry. The, I I will the uh, answer the to the uh, chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. Yeah, yeah that, that's okay. No, I know when you get kind of uh... no worries. So yeah, let's do. Do you know what the kind of uh, the difference between the A sixty four FX compiler and uh... I mean the thing is they they're using different compilers because <laughs> the Fujitsu compiler I don't think works on x eighty six, does it? Mm, I think so. Uh, the Fujitsu compiler is uh, only the ARC sixty four. Uh, yeah. Um, so let, let's leave that question. Uh, so going back to some of the other ones, uh, so I think we've kind of answered this one live. Yeah, it's difficult to compare given that the question, sorry, the, the systems are not the same uh, and the compiler is not applicable between the two of them. Mm -hmm. um, so on the TDP, do you know if the Skylake TDP that you're uh, using is the same as the FX1000 A64FX? Skylake TDP. The, yeah, how much power basically is the, what's the thermal envelope of the Skylake versus? Uh, power, oh, <laughs> so we did not check the power, but the uh, power, power efficiency is uh, more the, uh, uh, a sixty four FX is better than the Skyrim. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, is it po okay? A couple more questions. Is it possible to change the design of the A sixty four FX next gen to have more resources to improve out of order performance, but the cost of more chip area? Is there a limitation on the Armisa? Um, I'll take the second half of the question if you don't mind. <laughs> Yes, there is a uh -huh. limitation on the ARM, as in limitation because we fit into the 32-bit ISA, basically. It's got 32-bit, mm -hmm. like the actual instruction length is still 32-bit. I can promise you that there is definitely a limitation there. We're very careful as ARM what instructions we put in. Uh, would mm -hmm. you like, can you comment on the 64 FX next generation or should I? Uh, I can't say something <laughs> for the next, uh, but the, uh, the uh, limitation is not the ARM ISA, so, but the, I think the cost of the A64FX, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's basically, yeah, yeah, actually that's true. I mean, when I, that, no, that's true. I was going to say the, the area, sorry, the, the more out of order resources have nothing to do with ISA. That's just how many resources you have. But the ISA comes in play when it comes to adding more instructions. Okay, let's, we're done with this. Uh, somebody from Fujitsu, by the way, can probably comment on this even more. So it looks like the computation bound problem will, is not good on the current A64FX. Not quite what I got, okay. It, it's mentioned that it's due to hardware resources. Is it related to frequency? And there's a low base and boost frequency in the A64FX. Can you comment on this? We have the lowest. You mentioned that due to the hardware resources, it is also related to the frequency. Uh, no, uh, it's, it, it is not uh, related to the frequency. So just the uh, a, uh, hardware area or chip size. Okay. So. Hmm. And to the how did you find it on compute bound problems? Did you find it to be performing well or not so well? From all your uh, results? 
in computer are compute uh compute uh frequency the uh if the boost mode the freak uh compute intense application the performance it will be the better okay well, thank you mm. um 